Morning, I thought I'd just like to share um, how our mustard crop is progressing. I always find it interesting to go back and have a look at it. This mustard was planted after a flexi wheat, so relatively early, and uh, just spun on, and it's a, a mustard and buckwheat mix. So as you can see, I'm just trying to get my leg into focus here. So it is up to the bottom of my pocket on my trousers so I'd say that's a sort of a healthy sort of three foot three yeah three feet just coming out to flower um, it's a fairly big crop I think it went on at about seven kilos a hectare um, I'm just trying to see if I can see any buckwheat in it yeah out here on the margin where it's a little bit thinner you can still see the the white flowering buckwheat amongst the mustard. Mostly, if you look at the bottom, it is mostly just mustard really. Um, but what is, a bit of rape, but what's interesting is the volunteers and the suppression of volunteers. they pleased with that. And this block is programmed for a second flexi wheat. There's a dog going through it for perspective. Um, in a tram line, so it's way above her. Um, so this is programmed for a flexi wheat, and we will hopefully use the sky and plant straight into this as a as a green manure. And the hope is that the disc coulters will cut through the root bore holds the soil together enabling us to drill later than we would have been able to if it was simply into a cultivated land so we've got um i think it's about a 60 hectare block of this so we'll keep you in the loop a question you might ask me is why are we bothering with mustard really i, th I suppose there are four reasons um, let's hope I can remember them all, but basically uh, the flowering in the autumn is quite a late flower. You can see more white behind me uh, where the buckwheat is. So you're getting flowering in the autumn, so late season flowering, so it's good for your pollinators. And more insect life means uh, more beneficials. And so with more beneficials you're getting better better insect species, more predators. So that would be the first thing. Secondly, certainly there is a degree of weed suppression. These plants are of course, um, haven't been given any fertilizer. So they're uh, pumping exudates into the soil, feeding bacteria, fungi, uh, trying to keep the system alive whilst we wait for the cash crop to be planted. But one of the, um, the other calculations that I do is dry matter. So we're trying to build soil organic matter um, and a really healthy cover crop like this returns about six tons of dry matter to the soil. Um, that would compare to about a 10 ton per hectare application of cow muck. Now the logistics and the costs associated with spinning on um, 20 kilos of seed 15 to 20 kilos of seed is vastly different to applying 10 tons of cow muck. So from my point of view, it's a lot cheaper. It gives us a better range of uh, benefits. And overall, I'm really pleased when it turns out that, like this. So uh, that's why we do cover crops. So let's look at the alternative strategy, applying organic manures in this case compost. Here we have a yield map from our combine which shows a low yielding area in red. This corresponds to low levels of organic matter in the topsoil. So we have targeted this area with a focused application of compost using plant yield as an indicator of where additional action needs to be taken. 